Hi guys, thanks for coming to check out this video and we will get stuck into it in just a sec. I just wanted to quickly let you guys know what the winner is for the month of April. So I put to you three options last week and thank you so much for your votes. Um, we got a heap and the winner is Finland. And I'm super excited to do Finland because last year it actually came up in February when it was France or Finland and it had heaps of votes and I wasn't able to do it last year. So I'm very glad that I'll be able to um, look into the country, see what it's all about and try and get some inspiration for my bullet journal in April. So that will be coming in two weeks. Uh, but for now, let's get on to the New Zealand art on cue piece. So I started by asking you guys on my community tab, what word makes you think of New Zealand? And I got a few more responses this month, which was really nice. So thank you so much for people who responded to the question and helped me come up with this. So I ended up choosing the word cloud, which came from a suggestion from Beginner Crafter. Um, I really liked this one because it, I think it was quite freeing. And it definitely made me think of New Zealand as well because the name in the Maori language for New Zealand is Land of the Long White Cloud. So I just thought it was quite an, quite an arty and I felt like I could see a lot of ways that you could incorporate cloud into your artwork. Um, so I went with that one, I was decisive, chose it, and then got to thinking of what I would create for this piece. Now, if you've been following me for a little while, I have been doing some art on cue pieces that are in the style of Art Nouveau, as originally came from the Belgium setup at the beginning of the year. I was really inspired by the Art Nouveau style, and I just started creating these pieces of um, sort of beautiful ladies with lots of like florally backgrounds and swishes in that traditional Art Nouveau style. And I, I wasn't I wasn't finished last month. I did it again for Andorra. Um, I did a self-love piece and I just still wasn't finished. So I thought I would round out the series and finish on, uh, well, I don't know if that I'm finished completely, um, but I just wanted to de definitely do a third um, piece. So I thought I would entwine Cloud into a piece of a girl again, and then maybe tie some Maori sort of patterns into the, into the design as well, because Art Nouveau is known for all the patterns that it uses and those lots of flowing, swishing lines. And I just thought that would be ideal for the patterns that you see in the Maori patterns as well. So yeah, so that's where my head was at. And I thought, let's look at a piece that I can incorporate that inspiration word of cloud into. So where I started was basically thinking about how I could incorporate cloud into that Art Nouveau sort of theme that I had decided I wanted to work with. And there was two thoughts that mainly came to mind because I knew I wanted to do um, another girl in this piece. I thought it would be cool to do a girl with cloud-like hair, you know, so a very goddess-like looking woman with very full voluptuous hair that actually turns into a cloud. And I really liked that idea, but I also had another piece that was in my mind which is similar to my um, my banner actually on my YouTube channel. And it was having a cloud shirt that blends in with a cloud background. And then, so I was a bit torn with which to go with. So I did some thumbnail sketches in my sketchbook first. Um, but in the end, I decided to go with the cloud t-shirt and the cloud background blending together. And the main reason for this was um, partly due to composition. It just allowed me to put more uh, more design elements into the piece um, and because otherwise the the cloud sort of took over the entire piece and the cloud hair and the I had a sheet sort of covering the girl's flesh like her body um, to keep it discreet um, it sort of became all clouds in the thumbnail so I definitely wanted to have more opportunity to do some intricate patterns and the, the little koru and things like that throughout the piece so ended up going for the t-shirt with clouds on it and then try and tie that into the background behind. So I started out with my sketch in my sketchbook, as I said, and then I transferred that onto a piece of watercolor paper. Even though the majority of this piece is using the fine liner, I prefer to do this on the watercolor paper anyway, because if you tend to use just normal cartridge paper or just sketching paper, the thinness just doesn't hold that watercolor and then it's just gonna get you know curled and and just 
warp when you put the water onto it anyway. So even though majority of this piece is pen, I still prefer to do it on a watercolor paper. So that's something to keep in mind if, if you kind of do this sort of experimentation, mixed media sort of approach to your artwork. Um, just definitely use a thicker paper, the thickest you can, you can handle. <laughs> um, so yeah, as I said, the most part of this drawing is all using my Pigma Micron fine liners, which I'm in desperate need of replenishing because half of the, I really use the, the thinnest um, tips the most and they're just right down to the metal nib at the moment. So I'm really pushing them to their limits, but um, yeah, I've got to order some to get, yeah, to get some fresh ones happening. Um, but so I'm using the 0.3 mostly in this, I think, 0.03 nib and just using anywhere where I think there is any shadows on the girl itself or anywhere I want to make a little bit more um, prominent, I will use the thicker nib, which is a one mil, I think. Um, and then that just kind of adds a bit of variation to the whole piece. I think it's nice to have thicker lines and thinner lines. It just really brings pieces of the artwork out to the viewer. So I love doing that and I tend as a rule of thumb to try and place them on the side that would have the most amount of shadow. So if you're wondering where I got the image from itself, I did have inspiration from an image I found on Pinterest, which I will either put on screen or leave a link to down below. Um, I found this awesome picture of a chick who had um, tattoos all up her, which is it left, right? Ooh, it's her right arm. And I just thought it was a really interesting photo because she had her face covered and it was just the eyes coming through. I just thought it was really powerful and because I knew that I would have loved to include the tattoos in this one, um, I just thought it worked perfectly. So I've tried to entwine that image with, you know, all the design elements that I'm adding into the background. So I've got some of the ferns, the korus, and they're spiraling around. And I've tried to use the circle element a lot. So using that swirl, and trying to incorporate that at the top and at the bottom to sort of give some balance to it. And as far as the composition goes, it really is just um, just just trial and error, really. There was a lot of erasing going on in the beginning of this when I was setting it up um, and designing the way it's placed. You know, there's it doesn't come immediately like this. A lot of it, a lot, some of it does, but a lot of it is just trial and error. If something looks a little bit too swirly or too full on, I'll just pair it back and try and do something a little bit more simple. So it's just about seeing, just really using your, your artistic eye and deciding where you want things to be and where they look good to you. Because in the end it is all, it's all subjective. Um, I personally like this composition now. Um, but yeah, there was just little elements that I had to tweak here and there to get it to work for me and to my eyes, if you know what I mean. One thing I am really proud of, I really love it when just like a simple thing can just make it work for you. And so one thing that I did that I really, really love is I actually removed the base line under her right arm. So where that tattoo is, I just erased that part of the border that I had going around. And so it almost looks like the fern kind of rolls around and up and creates the hand from there where all the tattoos are. And just that little simple, tiny, tiny thing of just erasing the little border just makes me so happy because I'm like, oh, it's like a, it's like a negative space that becomes the hand. And yeah, it's little things like that that just finish off a piece for me and like just that little tweak and then I'm very happy with it, you know? So. I don't know if anyone else cares about that stuff, but I sure do. Um, and yeah, and so once I did that, I felt like the whole thing was coming together. And that's when I went in with getting some contrast and building some darker areas in the piece. It was all looking rather flat. Um, so I was trying to darken areas. And then I thought, you know what? I think we need to do a full head of black hair here. And then I knew I wanted to add blue watercolor for this piece. So the previous pieces that I've done have been gold and black and then a pinky color and black. So this time with the word cloud, I knew I wanted to use more of a soft pastel blue, um, like a bluish gray even. And so that's the color I've chosen for this, this piece. And I thought it'd be cool to entwine that blue into the hair as well. Because often you'll have like that dark black hair color that's sort of when, it, when the shine hits it, it can be a blue tinge. So I just thought it was a nice thing that could 
could work in this piece as well. So I ended up doing watercolor on her hair and then her eyes, her fingernails, and then the shirt and the background. I also thought I would mention that this technique I'm using is called hatching. And it's basically where you use your fine liners to create the depth by varying the sort of like the distance between each line. So creating little scratchy lines where shadows are and you're just varying the thicknesses and the spaces between each line to sort of trick your eye into thinking there's some gradation in the tones there. Hope that makes sense. Um, but yeah, I tend to do this a lot in my bullet journal setups. Um, it's just a quick, easy way of shading without having to get out your pencils and start blending. Um, but I also think it just looks really quite modern and I don't know, just appeals to me. So I've been doing my Art Nouveau pieces like this so that I can stick to just those two, um, two medias. So just the pen and the watercolor. And once my sketch was completed, I had all my tones in, my, I was happy with the contrast, and then I just had to add the color. So I'm just choosing one blue from my watercolor palette and a black to try and make it sort of more of a grayish blue tone. I just wanted the vibe of this piece to be a little bit more moody. So more of that um, stormy sky blue that you can get around clouds a lot. So that's why I added that black to make it a bit more grayish blue and I just didn't want it to be too clean and vivid a blue. So yeah, I mixed those two colors together and then just tested it on a little patch of paper to make sure I had the right shade and then just used that um, with my water brush, which contains the water inside it. So you can really, you can quite easily manipulate where that water is going. So I'm just putting that in the areas that I need it. And this part took, you know, the, the quickest out of the whole piece. So it's really just a splash of color at the end to sort of bring the piece to life. And then she was complete. And I'm super, super happy with how this one turned out. I think it was hard for me to love something as much as the Belgian piece that I did, the first one. Um, but I think this one tops it. I feel like I'm much more happy with how this piece turned out and sort of how unique it is with her face being hidden by that tattooed arm. I just really am happy with it. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching the process of it. If you love this piece as much as I do, it is available for purchase on my website and Etsy shop as a digital version. And for those of you who are the Voyager patrons, which is the top tier on my Patreon site, um, you guys will receive this as your free digital download for this month. If you're not sure what that's all about, um, just check out the link in the description box to my Patreon site where you can sign up to support me and you get a whole bunch of benefits um, like extra videos and extra art content and bullet journal content. Um, so there's three different tiers that you can choose from. Um, I hope this inspires you guys to pick up the pens and watercolor paint or whatever it is you like to use and create a piece inspired by clouds. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys back here next week for my digital portrait of Taika Watiti, which I'm very excited about. Okay, have a great week guys. I'll see you soon. Bye bye.